is our team maze. This is the second year that we've done this here in Cordell. Uh, we are doing this for students in grades 8 through 12. There's lots of different experiences that they can ex have in the maze. Uh, they're real life experiences without the real life consequences. When we started looking at our strategic plan and our needs within the community, we realized that there were several areas in which Chris County is very low in rankings with the kids count data. Uh, for example, our teen pregnancy rate, our STD rate for young people in this county. Um, and we felt like that this was something that we could do with a positive influence on them. I'm here today because um, I was told about this um, team maze by the uh, Chris County Family Connection and they told me that it's been a tremendous success um, here in Cordell, here in Chris County and in other places in the 2nd Congressional District. So I wanted to get a first-hand view uh, of what the program was all about. We've been very pleased with the number of volunteers who have turned out. We try to involve professionals in their line of expertise, and that's a real feat for this time of the economy, to be able to get people off their jobs and come in to volunteer time for two days and one night. We have dozens of organizations involved, from law enforcement to, to the medical and even mental health. We have uh, inside here set up a, a uh, if you would, a makeshift jail. Uh, at one point, there are some that are wearing the drunk goggles to actually and driving a golf cart through a cone system to see how dangerous it can be and how hard it is to operate a vehicle while they're intoxicated or under the influence of any drugs or alcohol. I think probably the most impact is the driving and the walking tests uh, with um, alcohol impaired um, goggles. Um, it really shows you that it would be very difficult um, to operate a vehicle or to pass that test being under the influence of alcohol. Um, and it just gives you a new perspective as to how dangerous um, alcohol can be and how it not only can affect your life, but also have a tremendous impact on the lives of others as well. There are uh, those that are a member of the judicial system who volunteer their time, uh, nursing staff, you have volunteers it's, uh, with the emergency evac, our local coroner, our sheriff's department, our police uh, department, uh, Georgia State Patrol, uh, well over a hundred volunteers that are coming in and taking part of this. Some in colleges who have allowed their nursing students to come. And, so it's a very big undertaking, but it's worth every moment. I'm here in representation of the judicial process for juveniles, and uh, just to explain to them a little bit more completely what happens when they do commit crimes. Um, they won't go before a Superior Court judge, they'll come before the juvenile court, and, and their cases will be adjudicated a little bit differently because the juvenile court looks at treatment and rehabilitation more so rather than punishment. What this states is that during lunch you gave a Tylenol 3 pill to a friend. Um, anytime that you do anything like that, especially if it's on school grounds, it's of a very serious offense, a very serious nature um, under the, the eyes of the law. You know, a lot of them, I think, are embarrassed to even see me here, um, scared of what I'm going to say to them that might, you know, um, might make them feel a little bit uncomfortable, but um, but that's not the purpose that we're here for today. Uh, it's just to, to give everybody an across the board um, view of what's going to happen if they do get in trouble because there's so many things that a juvenile can get in trouble for that, you know, if you're an adult, it, there's no problem because it's a legal activity, but if you're a juvenile, it's, it's treated differently. So uh, it just gives them a little bit of a heads up as to what they're looking at. Hopefully, they'll make better decisions when they're confronted with, with you know certain situations. Um, people often talk to young people about the dangers of these things but this particular program gives them an opportunity to, to experience, it them, experience it, it themselves and I think that um, can make all the difference in young people making the right choices because they have experienced it um, themselves through this team maze. Personally for me, I think that a lot of kids don't have um, 
any direction in making proper decisions. And when you're you're set in a split second moment as far as making a decision, you want to give them a little bit of information so that they can can use that to make the best decision for that situation. <laughs> And I, and I think with somebody here that's knowledgeable about what's going to happen if they make the wrong decision, um, hopefully they'll put that in their memory and, and think of it the next time something comes up and they're questioning what they need to do. In the field of prevention, we talk about saturation and dosage. And we know that the teen maze is not going to be a cure for all the social ills in our community. But we do believe that this is one powerful dosage of reality for our children.